Okay, I'm going to say I watched only half of the Mae Young Classic. Now, before I get to the final match of the Mae Young Classic Tournament, the inaugural one at least, because WWE has been rumoredly saying that we want to do more of these tournaments, um, I wanted to provide some background of what I thought when I heard the announcement. I was one of the people that were a touch concerned about the Mae Young Classic. Not because it would suck or anything, it, it was going to be awesome. Like, the Cruiserweight Classic was awesome, the UK Championship Tournament was awesome, so I didn't think, oh, the Mae Young Classic's gonna suck. <laughs> no, I didn't think that. Well, my problem was, what did the last two tournaments produce? Let's see. The Cruiserweight Classic was basically Raw's attempt to create their Cruiserweight division on Raw, and the only guys going that are actually doing something is Enzo Amore and Neville. Enzo Amore was just recently added. And Neville has been trying to do everything in his power to make the Cruiserweight work. Like, it's hanging on by a thread. And 205 Live isn't being watched much by people, so that's a pointless show. Like, I stopped watching it after, like, the third episode. I probably would go back, but, like... I have a job and whatnot, and I'm not really interested in 205 Live, especially since they should have just put the show in Full Sail University because they're going to make it a third hour of SmackDown, essentially. And there were, among other things, I wanted SmackDown, like SmackDown should have taken the Cruiserweights as Survivor Series, but uh, can't always get what you want. So, anyways. Um, <clears throat> but... The Cruiserweights are struggling really badly. The UK division, they haven't had their show yet. They're currently having delays and budget cut issue, budget issues. So they're currently working on NXT programming or they're still working in the independent scene. So, yeah, two tournaments that were supposed to bring up a show and a division have basically been delayed or failures. So when I heard of this women's tournament, I was like, okay... Um, okay, they'll do great, I'm, I have no doubt about that, but at the same time, it's Vince. He'll screw it up once they get to the main roster. Like, this is Triple H's creation, he's been presenting the idea, Stephanie McMahon has helped, has helped out, but really Vince is hands off of the tournament, so none of his horrible obsession to, to like, go ahead and, uh, yeah. So anyways, when this happened, I was worried that if this happens, these competitors would go to the main roster, or at least, well first, they most likely would start out in NXT, but then they would go to the main roster and flounder with Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss. I'm like, look what happened to Bailey of all people. Like, I said it. They had, to, had done effort to screw her up. Now she's being booed in NXT whenever she shows her face there. Yeah, they've ruined her. And I don't know what it will take to fix it. So, I was interested to see how this tournament would go. And then I heard that one of the four horsewomen of UFC, Shania Blazer... Now, Shania... Sh uh, I'm pretty sure I pronounced it wrong. I, before this video, I was trying my best to replay the event over and over just to get the name right. And I keep forgetting on that. So, yeah. I had... When I heard that, I was like, oh, she might be a heavy favorite. And then I heard that Dodeck's trying to get more... And, like, also, the Cruiserweight Classic had an agenda. It wasn't just to promote the Cruiserweight Channel of the world... It was to try and get Koro Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. And for the most part, they failed miserably. They're, they're not in the company. Like, Koro Ibushi was offered, and then they changed plans when he said no. Zack Sabre Jr. was offered, and they were originally going to let him win the tournament. So, yeah, basically, I think Vince considers the Cruiserweight Classic a failure in terms of not getting the right people they wanted and just got a bunch of hand-me-downs. That's how at least I think Vince sees it. Which makes what happened on Friday Night Smackdown so wonderful. I'll get to that in a later date. Just so you know, I seriously do hope he's alright. So, yeah. 
we got the Japanese wrestler and the only Japanese wrestler in the Mae Young Classic, Kairi Sane, versus uh, Sonya Bazer, who is a, who's the member of the Four Horsewomen. She goes ahead and she's backed by her fellow Four Horsewomen of UFC, and I was like, okay, we got two heavy favorites, and I generally don't care who wins, because this is going to be an awesome match. And here's the thing. WWE, they gave this match 12 minutes. Like, this match would officially start at 10.15, it would end before 10.30, which would be the time the 205 Live would start. And I'm like, why do you do that? Like, they could have let them go all out. Like, I know there's a time limit system here, since, you know, they're trying to be more authentic with the wrestling presentation and be like Ring of Honor or something, or the independent scene. But I'm like... Why not let them go for 20 minutes? Like, they're talented. They have the capabilities to do so. In fact, Kyrie Sane is considered one of the best wrestlers in the world. Or at least the female side of things. From what I've heard. But, yeah. And I'm pretty sure she... And here's another thing I had a problem with this one tournament. Um, They turned Sonya Bazer a heel in the tournament. I was like... Why? Like, during the tournament, she attacks somebody and refuses to let go of her submission. And she does it for a couple of minutes. And that turns to heel afterwards. And I'm like, why? Like, what's the point of that? Like, it kind of creates confusion with fans. Unless they're really hardcore fans. Or, especially since due to what happened in Florida... I do not want to get into that. They had to change the show from going to happening in Florida to going to happen at at the night after SmackDown. So the hardcore fans are gone from this equation, which sucks. And it's just the casual fans who are trying to leave the building because they don't want to stay for like an extra two hours since not only do they have to deal with the Mae Young Classic, they have to deal with 205 Live. So, okay. Now, when they turned Sonya Blazer heel, I was like, why still? Because this is a tournament. Like, they could do something after the event, but it creates an emotional confusion. Like, are we supposed to cheer for them or boo them when something happens? Like, Brian Kendrick was a heel during the, during the Cruiserweight Classic, and then they gave him a face farewell moment. Or at least a face emotional embrace with Daniel Bryan, and Bryan's not a heel, so it creates a cluster of, wait, are we supposed to cheer or are we supposed to boo? I- I'm completely confused here. If a casual fan was watching this who just likes heels or faces, and their heels or faces, and when they go ahead and are being buddy-buddy with each other, it just creates confusion in my opinion. So... Yeah, I just felt like, why not just make this a tournament? Give, you could give her an aggressive edge in her style, that works, but turn her full-blown heel, that doesn't work. Especially in a single tournament, when it doesn't relate to main storylines. So, yeah, um, Kyrie Sane and Sonya Blazer, Blazer were had 12 minutes. They went at it. They delivered an awesome match. It wasn't match of the year. I really wanted it to be match of the year because also I kind of think Vince would let would should have let them go all out. It would have fueled his fetish regarding a uh, UFC versus WWE. Who is superior, wrestling or sp- sports entertainment? Remember, Vince has daddy issues and he will not let that go. Or mixed martial arts. Yeah. So, yeah. And one of the highlights of the tournament wasn't actually the presentation of the show. Okay, that was one of them. But the biggest highlight was the interaction with the four horsewomen of UFC and the four horsewomen of MMA. Yeah, they're building a WrestleMania match. I guarantee it. And I was surprised that, and like I said, I was surprised that one of the four horsemen was in this tournament. I was expecting Ronda Rousey to first be in WWE before any of the other three. So, are they building? So, I thought they might do a build-up towards the four horsewomen. Like, Bailey's hurt, so she can't really be, she can't really do anything. But, are they building something up there? They've been in contact with Ronda Rousey. And, by extension, they could be in contact with the others. 
and they had a confrontation before the show, before, um, during the episodes where she confronts, where the four horsewomen of WWE confront Ronda Rousey and says, you named it time and place. So, yeah. I was getting the feeling like if, she, if, ba- Baser, if Sonya Baser is in this tournament, does that mean shenanigans might follow? I hope not, because this is a tournament, not a storyline. So, <sighs> this match was great. It could have been gr- better. It, they worked hard, and they and I really did love the big moments. Like, I really thought, like, considering this is not Vince McMahon, there, there's, anything could go. And I did love how they made it more realistic in terms of how Kyrie Sane broke out of the fit, out of uh, B- Bayes' chokehold. Whereas either they either if it was John Cena, he would use raw strength and pull the power from within, or Roman Reigns, who would use his powerhouse maneuver. She instead goes for a rib injury. Also, Kyrie Sane, she was dealing with some injury issues before the before the tournament, but luckily this was taped, so that gave her enough time to recover because she had broke her collarbone, I think, but it was not a big injury. So luckily um, for all of us, uh, she wasn't that badly injured and therefore could work this ter- this finale. But um, this match, like I said, it was okay, great, even, but it wasn't phenomenal like everyone was hoping. And Kairi Sane got the victory. And when I saw her match and how she acted in the match, I was like, I want her to be the one that beats Asuka. Like, there's no one else to really face her and beat her. Like, she's practically beating everybody in NXT and in the WWE main roster, pretty much. Except Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Everyone else, yeah, I think they were all beaten by her. Except those who were in WWE main roster before NXT was a thing. So there, but they are rarely used. So I would think Harry Sane would be the perfect woman to beat Asuka. But at the same time, she's foreign, and we know Vince has a prejudice. Unless you're Canadian or English. Yeah, I, I don't get it either. Like, look at Rusev. Like, my God, like, he poured his heart out on SmackDown and whatnot, and he gets reduced, and he's still treated as the villain. But yeah, I also felt like when they released the episodes, I felt I don't think I have enough time to watch them all because we only have like, what, a week before the term before the term concludes and we all have lives. Most of us, since some tend to be obsessed. If you've seen Grant, if you've seen my gameplay videos of people at absurd levels or ranks, <sighs> I will not understand that. So. After the match, when Kairi Sane got the victory, which was awesome, um, we see the WWE women for horsewomen clapping, and along with um, Asuka, she was there. Rousey looked like she was in tears. Sane approached Bla- Baser and helped her up, and then they hugged emotionally while still clenching her ribs. And then she raised Sane's arm up while, like I said, clenching her ribs. After the match, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon and Sarah Amanto uh, entered the ring where they tr- where the trophy was positioned in the center, and Hunter gave Sane a large bouquet of roses. Baser left the ring while Hunter raised Sane's arm, and Ross, Jim Ross, and Lita, who were the commentators of the show, Jim Ross was awesome, but Lita, I- I'm still working. She's a work in progress. Spoke of how proud he was to be part of the tournament. I would have loved it if Alinda Blaze was uh, the commentator with with uh, Jim Ross, not Lita, because it would have been different. Like we've seen Lita commentate on kickoffs and pre-shows, and so much. Like, yeah, she's just not. I just don't feel it. So, yeah. I was expecting several things in this match. One, the female referee that they had hired for this tournament, and also, I think, full-time. I was expecting her to be at the finale, so but she wasn't there. We didn't get her. We just got another referee guy. So I was wondering what happened to her that time, the t- on that day. And then we got... Then I was hoping... I was dreading that Vince McMahon would rear his ugly head in the show 
and have the horsewomen of NXT and WWE get involved somehow. At best, they could have done it after the tournament. So, luckily that didn't happen. And the third thing was, due to Asuka vacating the women's NXT Women's Championship before the tournament actually concluded, and since this was aired live, I was expecting Triple H to announce that it would be for the NXT Women's Championship. Surprisingly, we didn't get that. This was a standard tournament, not for a title. It was for prestige and honor and female ev- revolution and the women's evolution business they're still doing. So, yeah. So it's been report. So it's been confirmed that Kyrie Sane, because of her victory in the tournament, will face have an opportunity to get the NXT Women's Championship at the next paper- at the next NXT Takeover event. Her opponent is currently unknown. I'm hoping for Ember Moon. So, it's going to be interesting where that goes. It's going to be interesting where Sonya, Shania B- Bazer goes because she might go to the main roster. Like, she, she, Rousey, and the other two horsewomen, they might go to up the main roster around near WrestleMania season in order to prepare for their war against the four horsewomen of WWE. Then we'll get UFC versus WWE. And all hell will break loose. Granted, that will be awesome, but... Okay, let, let's be honest. The Four Horsewomen, they are really damaged right now. Becky Lynch isn't doing anything. Sasha Banks is hot potatoing with the Women's Championship. And looked at as, as injury prone. Charlotte's away for a while because her father's recovering. So I'm not blaming WWE for that. Like, I, like I'm surprised they even let her go since Vince is is a heartless psychopath sometimes who cares more about ratings because come on if he has an injury fetish for wearing your heels to target people as injured repaired areas I'm pretty certain he doesn't give a damn mostly <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding um and Be- okay uh, and Bailey she's injured and even if she was to return she'll be booed if she returns as a face Yeah, um, how is the Four Horsewomen of WWE supposed to tango with the UFC Four Horsewomen? Yeah. So, it'll, they have, so, when, by the time Bailey gets back, they have to build them back up again. And then somehow find a way to bring them in, like, as a cohesive, co-branded team, since two are on Raw and two are on SmackDown. So, like I said. Kyrie Sane, good, best of luck to you in NXT. Best, congrats on winning the tournament. Four Horsewomen of NXT and WWE. I hope you could do a match at WrestleMania. I just really hope the four horse, the booking is good. I'm not expecting greatness, but I'm hoping it's good because that's at least what I can hope for today in WWE main rosterville, at least until Triple H takes over. And I hope that they do this tournament again next year. Though, it seems like they're going to do a cycle. Like, I'm hoping for a tag team tournament next year. And then they go back to the Cruiserweights. And then they go back to the Women's. Like, that's how... I think that's the cycle they're going to do, hopefully. If they do a tag team tournament. I'm curious as to know what would the tag team tournament be. And I really would hope the Young Bucks are on board. Since they recruited almost all the big members of Bullet Club. Might as well get... Get the Young Bucks, they just need to get Kenny Omega, but right now he's not interested. So, like I said, this was a, this, a, I've seen the first three episodes, first three to four episodes, so I don't provide a full detailed review of the May Young Classic. This was just the final match, and this was awesome. The May Young Tournament had, he has a lot, has a lot of promise as an inaugural, as a co, as a co helping year event. Um, I can't wait what's happening for all these talented women. Uh, some might go back to the independents. Some might sign with WWE. Some might go to May Rosterville and fight the Four Horsewomen. I just hope they're allowed to keep their styles, though, considering the Cruiserweights will water down after only a week of being on the main roster. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's that's just wishful thinking. So everyone, this was my thoughts on Kyrie Sane versus Sonya Bazer. This was Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more.